We're back, we're back. I'm Dave Downson. welcome back to Grip Tips. Today we have quite a few S-Bones accessories. I can work with a couple of aperture lights. Got a lot to cover, so per usual, let's just get into it. The first accessory comes with a kit and it's the reflector, which as I said in the last episode, kind of creates like a hot spot in the middle of the beam because the pattern on the inside of the reflector is pushing the beam a little bit more center uh, or narrower. Uh, but I was watching a friend of mine, Scott Balcom on his channel, and he just decided to take the old reflector from the 300D Mark I and use it instead because it was a bit more even and I absolutely have to agree with him. And by the way, just a side note, Scott releases more episodes than I do and is full of a bunch of great knowledge and, and info. And I highly recommend that if you have not seen his channel that you go check him out. Very humble guy. I've never actually talked to him in person, but I video chatted with him on the phone and he also made this happen this year at NAB. Dave, I, I do watch cryptids. Is that good? I don't watch it. No, I do. <laughs> Said my name. Film Riot, Ryan Connolly, which is like, why would you do that? Ryan Connolly has no, you know, he, he's got no influence on me. Yeah, all right. But seriously, check out Scott's channel. I'll leave a link in the description below. So I decided to do the exact same thing as Scott using the Mark I's reflector, and I have to agree with him. It definitely evens out the beam uh, if that's what you're going for. Just something to keep in mind. Now, the next modifier that I want to talk about is Aperture's Barn Doors, which are super badass in my opinion. Uh, in that you can also fit a grid spot into them. To install, all you have to do is connect the dish to the lantern, and then the barn doors have these two tabs that grip the lip of the dish. Spin the barn doors all the way around, and you have this like wire steel stock thing that just gets hooked into place. And I will also say that the barn doors, they do spin 360 degrees, but it is kind of a friction fit because of the paint that's in it. So I recommend kind of rocking it back and forth or spinning it back and forth so that it can kind of spin freely uh, in the future. Now we're gonna come back to the barn doors in just a second. Now I wanna show you the two by Fresnel that I got. It came with a really nice carrying uh, case for protection. Uh, and it's something that I kind of wish that the barn doors had as that just kind of came in a box. So I don't really know how to keep those safe other than just putting them back in the box, but boxes are gonna get ruined over time. So, uh, but when I first got my hands on it, I felt like there was actual construction grade plastic on it. Like it felt thick, it felt durable, something that could bounce around on the truck and not get destroyed. So I, I really like the design of that. And also the focus and spot of this, I like more than a lot of other Fresnels that I've ever messed with. I mean, you literally turn the front of it like a camera lens would and you're either spotting it or you're flooding it. As far as the spot flood goes on the two by Fresnel, Aperture, I think you guys nailed that. Now, if we just take a second and revisit the barn doors, you can actually apply this to the two by Fresnel, which I thought was really, really interesting. And inside of the barn doors, if you didn't notice earlier, there's actually a gel frame. Um, I didn't cut the gel for this example, but I think you guys kind of get the idea. You could slide in a gel into this frame and it just kind of snaps into place. Uh, here you can see that there's a couple of magnets here and here. Uh, and like I said, you just kind of slide it in between that lip and let the magnets do the rest of the work. As I said, there's also the option to grid spot, which I haven't really covered and maybe someday I will. Uh, but that's what's nice about these is that it can work like egg crates to really control the spill of the light. Uh, and here you can see the flood of the barn doors and how when I snap the grid spot in, the light then drops all the edges of the spill, giving us a little bit more control of the light path. And now we're going to move on to a couple of softbox options. Bubble wrap! Bubble wrap! Where? So I had two different options for soft boxes, which the first was somewhat like a china ball, uh, but it's a cooler version of an airy pancake in my opinion, and it's called the Aperture Lantern. And it came with the skirt, which we'll talk about again in a second, but what I really dug about the lantern is that it's super simple to set up. Just press the bottom of the lantern against any hard surface, and the inside hooks into place while taking the shape of a china ball. And here's another shot without the lantern diffusion so that you can see how it all kind of comes together. Seriously, super simple. I don't know who thought of this, but P.S. I love you. So with this lantern, there's also these Velcro tabs, and then you also have the skirt that has other Velcro tabs on it. And that way you can actually skirt the light all the way around to kind of make this work a little bit. And this is gonna be a bad example, but kind of like a grid spot, uh, except you do have the option to roll up one side of the lantern so that you can kind of control the spill in any which direction. I mean, here I'm just kind of spinning around in circles, but I think you guys get the point. You can have it with the skirt on, 
or you can completely take it off. Now next up we have the Light Dome 2, which has one of the most badass systems I've ever seen for setting up tent poles. It literally is just pull and they snap into place. They also have these little lever buttons so that when you're wrapping out, they collapse easily. And again, it's something I wish that all soft boxes had. Uh, I will say that the tent poles on this feel a little bit like if I pull too hard, that I might accidentally permanently cold roll the tent pole, but these seem to do a fine job. Now inside of the dome, there's a level of diffusion that you have to put on before you put on the outer diffusion, uh, but it just simply attaches with these four Velcro tabs. After you've done that, you can move to the edge of the light dome and add the diffusion it comes with. Super simple to put on as it's just Velcro. I will say there's about two inches in width of Velcro on the dome and it's kind of important to place the diffusion Velcro on the edge closest to the light because of the next accessory, which is an egg crate to help with spill. Almost like a grid spot again, which easily Velcros into place the same way the diffusion does. And here's just a quick example showcasing my double chin and then I rip it away, and the background is now more exposed to the light. The Light Dome also has a gel holder that magnetically holds your gels in place. Really like the design of this as well as it's super simple, just press and snap into place kind of thing. Uh, then open the gel holder and slide in your color and push the door up until the magnets grab onto the door. And as you can see, they're right here and here. And then if you wanna remove the gel holder, you just grab these two wire squeezy thingies. I don't really know what else to say. Uh, and then just remove it. Then we have this. It's the aperture spotlight attachment that everybody's been going nuts over. Been super excited to see this in person. As for me, I've only messed with the Joe Lico and I plan to do an up on Source 4 soon, but this is a cheaper alternative to the real thing. And if there's anybody out there who is wondering like, is this thing made out of plastic? This thing is solid metal from what I can tell and weighs what I think it should. It's a, an absolute beast and it weighs about the exact same as a Joe Lico with the light attached. Now, if you remember from my Joker accessory video, you remember all the screws that I had to like take out in order to attach it and I had to put an extender in, etc. Now, check out how fast this mounts. Done. It's literally that simple with the S-Bones mount. You still have all the basic operations of Alico Source 4. They have a knob on the side of the barrel instead of on top so that you can focus your light by pushing the lens in or out. You also can remove the lens and insert others by unscrewing the knob all the way out and just pulling out the lens altogether. Here I have a 36 degree lens, but you also have the options of a 26 degree lens and a 19 degree lens. You also have leaves just like your Source 4s would so that you can make harder cuts and shapes inside of your light. Here I'm refocusing the lens to show how sharp it can get. And it tends to be a tad soft around the edges, uh, but that's a pretty sharp slice of light for the most part. And the leaves are on all four sides so that if you want to further fine tune into a simple line like thing, uh, you absolutely are able to do that. But keep in mind that this is an ellipsoidal light, so whatever you do to one leaf is gonna affect either the bottom of the light or you know the top of it, depending on which side that you're touching because it's gonna be the opposite. Now I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but there was a shoot that I did um, for M&M's Walk on Water, and I did that with two other grips, uh, Corey James Taylor and Laura Sapphire. Um, we had this 800 Joe Lico that was overhead and we were focusing a beam of light over a microphone and here I'm just trying to imitate that in my family room. I can't really show that clip or at least I assume I can't show that clip here on YouTube but I will leave a link in the description below so that you can kind of compare and contrast and I gotta say just looking at it and I know that the setting is completely different. I'm in my family room and he's on a stage uh, but even just kind of just to kind of imitate it it's damn close. Um, so that's where these lights are really cool so that you can fine tune your patterns and shapes. There's also a slot to stick in your favorite gobo patterns here. I'm using the beloved Venetian blind pattern. And while I do think that it's really cool that I can do that, I will say that the focus for these patterns is just not quite there. If I just pause this at its sharpest point, the blind pattern seems a bit squished. And furthermore, the focus is kind of soft on the outer edges of the pattern. Um, and it might not be the biggest problem, but I think that may depend on your shot. Uh, there's three different patterns this came with and I tried all three. The edges are just a bit too soft. So that's an issue, but there's also kind of one other big issue. The barrel doesn't rotate. And while this may not be a problem to some, there's always a DP who wants to modify the light by the millimeter, AKA a little bit more to the left. Just as an example, if I drop this gobo in, I don't really have an option to fine tune the rotation of the gobo. I mean, this is a little bit over exaggerated, but if I need that gobo to be straight, like dead on, 
I have to continuously pull the gobo out, tweak it, put it back in, and it's kind of more of a guess and check method where if the barrel turned like other Source 4s and Lecos, uh, then I could just tune it by the degree. So that's a little bit of an issue that I'd like to see fixed, but I already let Aperture know, so I'm sure there might be some sort of uh, upgrade coming soon. Aperture also has an iris that can be used with this and it works a lot like the other ones that I've used. Uh, the handle feels a lot smoother than most that I've played with but then again this is brand new so maybe that's why. Uh, an iris basically helps you control the diameter of the spot whether that's narrow or wide open. You can really see how much light gets cut down with the iris so very cool there. Lastly, and maybe this is something I probably should have said in the beginning of the episode, but they have a wireless new app and it's free and it's called Citus Link. It's an app that controls the light wirelessly. Everything that you can do with this light can be controlled. I can fine tune the percentage incrementally, change between quarter, half, and full. I can also change the dimming curve, which I understand, but I don't really know where I would use that yet. Uh, if somebody wants to give me a good example, I would love to read that comment below. Uh, I think that's something that somebody could really uh, teach me. Uh, but I do think that it's cool, uh, but I don't know if I would use it unless it's like theatrically or maybe for like a sunrise. All right, maybe I'm starting to list my own reasons. <laughs> then aside from that, we have uh, a separate effects panel, which I briefly went over last time, but just to kind of reiterate, I can do explosion, which I didn't realize that there's actually a trigger button there for that. Sorry, just didn't see it. Strobe, which just consistently flickers. Pulsing, which is just a rhythmic dim up and dim down effect. TV, which subtly but quickly changes the intensity. Lightning, which flashes once then flickers. Fault bulb, which flickers randomly. Fireworks to start intense and then fade slowly. And lastly, paparazzi to imitate camera flashes. We can also control the intensity and decay of these effects as well, all inside of the app. I mean, this app can do plenty of other things, but for now, as far as the 300D Mark II is concerned, this is a great option for wireless control. So that's a lot, but I was trying to think, what's like the overall cost of everything altogether? You know, you got the Aperture 300D Mark II, it's $1,100. The barn doors are 60 bucks. The two by Fresnel is 120. The lantern is 80 bucks. The light dome two is $220. The spotlight is $500 and the iris is $100. And then, and then there's the app, but that's free. Now that's a grand total of $2,180, which is just amazing that you can get all of that out of just one light. I think the results kind of speak for itself. Aperture is trying to make the Swiss army knife of LED technology and at a cheap price. And I think that they're killing it. So seriously, good job guys over there. But sadly, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you liked today's episode, please let me know in the comment section below. Uh, maybe give this episode a like if you actually liked it so other people can find it. Don't forget to buy a t-shirt and also check out my buddy Scott's channel. I think you guys are gonna like it. All right, we'll see you on the next one. I almost saluted. I know somebody's gonna, uh, fine. We'll see you on the next one. Oh,